Hello there, welcome to my channel. Again back, a continuation of the frontalis and the occipitalis. This, this is the lateralis. Lateralis is quite a little bit funny. Lots of things in this to study. Maybe people just, just don't agree, but it has a lot of things to study. The first thing here in the lateralis, remember frontal bone will meet us again. Of course, the parietal bone will meet us again. The temporal bone will meet us again. And hello, welcome to this bone, which I have colored for you here. This is the greater wing of sphenoid. Students tend to confuse this. It's the greater wing of sphenoid. Sphenoid bone has a greater and a lesser wing. Okay, but I'll show you separately. Huh? The greater, I'll show this to you. This is the uh, sphenoid bone. What you're seeing right now is the greater wing and the lesser wing of sphenoid, which are, this is, will be the upper part and this is the lower part, what you're observing right now. It's the greater wing of sphenoid, just this one. It goes upwards and forms a separate location in the lateralis here. So we have here in the lateralis, the frontal bone, parietal bone, temporal bone, and uh, greater wing of sphenoid. And then we have something called as parietal eminence. You know, frontal eminence, the same thing. We have something called parietal eminence. Superior temporal line, let me just draw for you. Superior temporal line, oh God, inferior temporal line. If it's not confusing you any further, superior te temporal line, inferior temporal line. And then also we have some thing called as important sutures. These sutures are a little bit confusing, so just try to explain to you very easily the one, the one which I have done here for you. This suture, the big suture, which is this one, you know, it's called as the squamous suture, this one, the part of the temporal bone, so squamous suture. This is a squamous suture. The next one is the same thing, the coronal suture, which is coming and up going out till here. And the center one connecting between squamous and this uh, coronal will be something called as a spinoparietal suture. This is a parietal bone, the spinoid. Okay, so we have something present between them, the spinoid and the parietal bone, the spinoparietal suture. Then this this down one, what are you seeing? This this down one, which I'm just showing you this particular part. Okay, this is the spino squamous suture. No confusion, please. Squamo, yes. Spinoparietal, yes. Spinosquamous, yes. Coronal suture. So all they lead to formation of a typical H-shaped structure. This is called as the terion. It's P-T-E-R-I-O-N. Terion is a H-shaped suture. Very important clinically. It has lots of uh, things for you to study in future classes. Terion. This is the H-shaped suture. It's called as a terion. So terion is formed by this union of this all these things which I just told to you. Let's go now. This lateralis has many other things for us to study. That is, number one, uh, the terion, I just said you, the greater wing of spinoid, the zygomatic bone. The purple thing what you're seeing is a zygomatic bone, of course, with the frontal process of zygomatic bone and the temporal process of zygomatic bone. So this is this this arrow where I have stopped. You know, this this suture, the, this particular part here is the temporal process of zygomatic bone. So obviously, this is the zygomatic arch. This part is the zygomatic arch, the temporal bone here. And... Uh, Next, we have something called as this one. Just observe down here, please. Just touch down and see you have something called adductor tubercle. Sorry, sorry, extremely for me. There's an articular tubercle. You know, teaching anatomy and anatomy. I just uh, do blunder by telling adductor. So this is uh, the articular tubercle for the temporomandibular joint not to come forward. So this will be the mandibular fossa, which I actually teach you in the part of um, basalis, but I'll just mention it. This is the mandibular fossa. We have here something called articular tubercle and then also uh, in this particular region you come across the mastoid uh, uh, mastoid process this one you know the nipple of the skull the mastoid process and this is the supra mastoid crest what I'm just sharing now and down to that immediately you'll come across something called the uh, uh, meatal or supra meatal triangle this one the supra meatal triangle is present in this region what I'm sharing you very close to this hole where your ear comes out. Here's uh, external acoustic meatus. This is the external acoustic meatus. This is the supramiatal triangle, supramastoid crest. I hope you can see this, please. Okay, the mastoid process. Let's now go back to the same sutures here. We have two more sutures in this region. That sutures will be uh, this one from the parietal bone. Okay, the parietal bone to the mastoid process. We have something called as the parietomastoid suture, and we have from the occipital bone to the mastoid process. We have something called as the occipitomastoid suture. Parietomastoid. This is a lambdoid suture, right? Oops. Yeah. Parietomastoid suture. Obviously, mastoid process here. Uh, Stylite process is also present. I'll show you when I go to the basalis region. Now, what do we have here? Oh my God, yes, you need to study this. Yes, please forgive me. You need to study all these nonsense things. This is the external occipital um, uh, meatus, uh, external occipital 
sorry, pardon me again, this is an excellent acoustic meatus, um, that where the uh, ear tube comes out. And just be, uh, below that, we have uh, a very important parts of which are located in this region, that is, for, is number one will be something for us to study, that is the uh, tympanic part of the, this one. This red line is a tympanic plate, tympanic plate of the temporal bone, this particular part here. Yes, this one you can easily observe it, tympanic uh, part plate here. And um, the uh, petrosquamous uh, suture, petrosquamous suture here in this part. And this is the tegment part, tegment part. If you can ignore, you can ignore this off. This is the tympanic plate, tegment plate of the tympanic bone. And this is the petromastoid, uh, petrotympanic uh, fissure. This one, petrotympanic fissure. This is with the mandibular fossa again in this region. And then what do we have here? Yes, we have still many things. This is the lateral uh, pterygoid plate. In the basalis, we have something called as a medial pterygoid plate. This one, what you're seeing is the lateral pterygoid plate. Hence, in this hole where the, the entire hole where is going, that will be the uh, pterygo uh, palatine fossa. This one, this one, pterygo palatine fossa. And very close to that here, one more thing, the pterygo maxillary fossa. Pterygo palatine, pterygo maxillary. The arrow where it is showing upwards will be the infraorbital uh, fissure. Zygomatic process of maxilla. I know it's very confusing. Just pause my video, stop it and go for it. Yes, in the zygomatic bone you have something called as an anterior root as well as an, sorry, posterior root and an anterior root which are the attachments for the zygomatic process to be attached to the temporal bone. And here we have this one, this part. I know it's too difficult. Please forgive me. Again, I'll tell you this is a lateral pterygoid plate. Then we have here the hole here present, this hole, you know, that, that's the uh, pterygopalatine fossa and this hole, these two things in between, you can search the man, uh, skull, the pterygomaxillary fissure or the uh, uh, fossa here and then we have the zygomatic process, this one, this is the zygomatic process of the maxilla. This is much about the um, uh, lateralis. It's quite difficult. Just go back, pause the video, stop it. Lot of things for you to answer. This is in depth. Everything included. I have excluded hardly anything in this. Uh, I hope um, everything is just uh, uh, fine for you to understand. So, very lots of effort goes in making these videos. Uh, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed. Bye bye.